This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Bobby Slayton. That's my introduction. That's the, that's, you know, let me, let me explain something to you. You know, when he used to come on this show yeah. and the other 40 shows you yeah. got fired from, yeah. the other 12 yeah. shows you quit, yeah. and the other few yeah. shows that you got older, you, you forgot you had. Yeah. yeah. Every time I do a show, you give me this great introduction, which was actually getting kind of boring because it was the same introduction all the time. But that, and not only that, but I would always get all dressed up for your show. Yeah, I just you, worked would. Out, you would. And I said, I should put on a shirt with sleeves. And I go, why should I do that when Alex I, shows I don't up? Know that like you... Beaver Cleaver or Gomer Pyle on leaves. You know, you show up like, 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 you know, why should I get dressed up for you, for your imaginary viewers and listeners, when you don't even care about them? Well, at least I'm wearing pants. Are How you, do you know are, I'm not wearing pants? I, I don't know if you're wearing pants. Alex, it's not like the old days, Alex. <laughs> I've changed. My pants. Not my underwear yet. Not my, your underwear. My, yet. my pants. All right. Yeah. So, anyway. We don't have, all right. Way, you want me to give you? This. You want me to give you the big introduction? No, 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 no. Ladies, nobody cares. ladies and gentlemen, um, here's they've Bobby turned out Slate. by now. But yeah. um, what's interesting? I told my girlfriend not to call between eleven and twelve, mm -hmm. uh, my time, because mm -hmm. we were doing a uh, um, an interview with. As you, didn't you just do Alex's show a few weeks ago? I said yes, but he wants me back on again, and she said, well. He must really like you because you're such a good interview <laughs> that he wants to talk to you more. And I thought, yeah, that's right. And then I realized it's probably not that. It's probably that he can't get anybody else to do the it, show. That's pretty much so, it. Yeah, no, yeah. I, but, 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 you know, I mean, the reason I do these with you is because we're old friends. You know, that's it. Yeah, you know, yeah, old that, friend. And that's why we yeah. do it more than like once a year. Yeah, I like when people say we're old friends. But then if you yeah. have somebody to borrow money or you need them to well, help you move, they're not such a good friend. Well, no. I'm an old friend. My back hurts, and I'm I'm, I'm on Social Security. Yeah. And then it becomes that kind of old, where I, I wish I could help you, but I can't. All right. But right. Anyway. But, but hopefully but that day won't come soon. How are you? It fine, but it's nice that you have exceeded or acceded or what's the word I'm looking for? I I've lost all. Has, I, Hasidic? I, yeah, I've got Hasidic. Yeah, I don't need Portuguese. Yeah. Hasidic? Is that the word you? I you know. I, I, just I'm, I, I, I thank you for acquiescing to do the program. Finally, I came out with a big word. Well, um, I had nothing else to do, really. Um, um, I told you, you know, my day's not like Groundhog Day where every day is the same. For a guy that's semi-retired like myself, it always seems, and it probably because I have a house, that there's always something to do, you know? And then, I'll, but I'll find stuff to do. Like I'll go, I'm out of paper clips. Do I really need them today? I better go down to Staples and get some paper wait clips. A minute, you wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You go to Staples to buy your paper clips? I just, well, go, I, I, I just go to Amazon. Oh, I need play paper, okay, paper clips. And they're like, well, you paper, know, 49 well, cents and they still ship them to me. Right, right. Well, yeah. you know what though? I'm looking for an excuse to get out of the house. I'm on Amazon enough. And as much as I- Well, I mean, like, but when you, when you were in the middle of this whole uh, thing, which is still really going on, uh, this pandemic, uh, I, I found I ordered everything on Amazon. You know, uh, I me mean, too. I ordered. Well, er, I or, had Instacart who went to Costco for me. I didn't right. do any. I didn't leave the house. Well, the thing is, look, I like going to Costco. I don't. I, I'll go there every couple of weeks because yeah. I like going there because I see things I don't realize that I needed or I wanted, and I, I like to look at the no, wine you, selection. You, you, you I get, like to look at yeah, stuff. You get to see stuff you didn't know you didn't need. But sometimes you don't need it, but you want it. Sometimes you want it, you forgot to put it in your cart. Look, I'm on Amazon a lot. What's interesting is that, you know, I, I try to go to like my, there's one local bookstore left at the bottom of the hill. And occasionally I'll go in there to look at books that, oh, I go, well, here's a book. Wow, I, I know Mel Brooks had a new biography out or whatever. And then I look at the price and I, oh, I can get it on Amazon half the price probably yeah, but it's but not that, right i like to give, i like to give money yeah, since yeah. i'm there i give money to my local bookseller very now good that I will, very good yeah. bravo bravo yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, i like to do that but at the same time you know 
you, you know, there's, I, I realized there was a lot of stuff I didn't realize I could get on Amazon. It finally sunk in, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, like my girlfriend would get me the shampoo. She said it was great for gray hair. And it was available at this beauty supply place a mile away. And then I realized, why don't I see if it's on Amazon? Of course it's on Amazon. So, you know, I I take advantage of that as much as I can as well. I, you know? feel, I feel somewhat guilty about it, you know, because of exactly what you said about the bookstore. You know, right. that it's, it's nice to go to the local store and buy it. But unfortunately, right. they can't compete price-wise and they can't compete with the fact that I'm lazy, okay? Right. And all right. I have to do on Amazon is go click and I get my paper clips. Right, yeah. right. Well, no, 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 that's fine, but I'm not lazy. And I like to go out and, you know, do things. You know, and I, I, you know, I jump in my car, I live like, you know, LA is not a walking town, so, no. but I live literally five minutes from, you know, my dry cleaner, my bank, my five grocery stores, my Whole Foods, my bookstore. So it's nice, you know, usually what I'll do is I'll, I just go down to the valley, do everything, and come home and feel like I've done something productive and constructive today. You know, it's, yeah. well, as a matter of fact, when I'm done talking with you, we're having a heat spell, so I got to go to the nursery and and replace a few plants. I feel like this is going to be a big day for me. I got to, re- I'm, I'm, I'm a gardener now. I'm a I plant. I, you know, I'm a horticulturist. Well, uh, you, know, a, you know, when I lived in California, as you know, I always had a car, and you, you, I would even get in the car to go three blocks up to the pharmacy. Right. That's because you were a lazy fuck. Yeah. I'm, I'm a walker, you know, and, and uh, yeah, but you know, the, the last the time point. my girlfriend and I were in New York, what was amazing to me, and I, that she outwalked me one day. You know, we were usually, we'd stay in an apartment uptown yeah. on the east side, yeah. and if people know New York, you know, we would walk all the way down to the village, and we'd stop along the way. Oh, it's happy hour for oysters here. And I, I'd have a list of places I might want to go. Hey, let's stop in here for a beer. Let's have a glass of wine. Let's keep walking. Let's get a pedicure. You know, And we'd walk and walk and walk to the village. We'd walk from the East Village, then over to the West Village, walk back uptown, and walk, cut across again. We would basically walk, you know, 10 miles to 15 miles, maybe in, in a day. Oh, really? We'd really traverse New York City. But, but there was one day, and I had my new sketches on. I love my sketches. She out walked me. I go, can we just take a break? And I, it was kind of cool that that I have a woman in my life who can one one time out walk me. Well, here's the point. Here's the point. I was to begin with. I walk every day. I take about a mile and a half to a two mile walk every day, just just to walk. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, the fact is that when I was in California, I had a car everywhere I went. Car, car, car. Go up to the go up to the mountains. Go down to the seashore. Drive, 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 drive. drive. I, you know, behind the wheel of a car. Now I live in New York. I haven't owned a car since two thousand four. Well, let me ask you something. When okay. you lived in San Francisco, and I remember one of the apartments you had in the marina. You mm-hmm. were literally a five to ten block walk to Chestnut Street to buy some. You wouldn't even. Walk to Chestnut Street to go to the movies, go to the drugstore, do anything? Nope. Most of the time I would do that just because finding a parking space if I drove there. But but wait a minute, the pharmacy did have a parking lot. So, you know. But anyway, the point I'm making here is I haven't had a car since 2004, and whenever I've needed a car, I've rented it. And I haven't rented a car in about four years. I have not driven in four or five years. I don't know if I know how to drive anymore. I, I just well, had that fear. If I got behind the wheel of a car, uh, I wouldn't know what to do. You know, I wouldn't have the skills. But you know what? You must be getting really old because driving a car is like the old thing about you know, riding a bicycle. It's it, once you I'm, do it, I'm, you're not. I'm sure swimming. it is. You're not going to. I'm forget. sure it is. But you know, I get a little lightheaded lately, and I'm afraid that I'm the, I don't have the same control I did. My old friend Gary Haber, he quit driving because he really? had a, he had, he he hit a guy on a bike by accident very it didn't hurt him you know but he said after that i'm through driving and now his wife drives him everywhere you sure it was by accident because i'll tell you right where i live on mulholland these asshole bike riders <laughs> they, they hog the lane and i would just I, i'm always thinking i would love to swerve and just hit one of these motherfuckers not kill him but you know incapacitate him oh, you're absolutely you know, right so. you're absolutely right but fuck point the is, bike riders point, point is so i just i have a great fear of that I, I just if i get behind the wheel of a car i either won't know what to do or i, I just don't have the same clarity of thought that i once had you know I take a drug every day for my neuropathy that makes me kind of forget stuff, and I'm a, I'm just afraid that I won't be able to drive, and yeah. and uh, that's a real fear. I hey, okay, let's get back to me. I don't okay, really let's get back problems. to you. Let's get yeah. back to uh, what was your I, career. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, I have nothing to really talk about since I talked to you last time. You, you, I got you've really nothing quit. going up. You've really quit, haven't you? Well, it's like that old. I think I said this last time on your show. You can't. You can't fire me. I quit. So, when I told you this last time, yeah. uh, that, and I'm sure I did because look, if I was making Bill Maher, Bill Burr, you know, Wild Bill Hickok, any Bill, yeah. if I was making it. If I was making Leno, you know, if I was making the you know, the hundred thousand to two hundred thousand, you know, uh, dollars a show and playing Carnegie Hall and working the Ryman Theater in Nashville, whatever. But I was playing horrible comedy clubs, and yeah. you know, my audience is, uh, you know, I, it's, they're like you and me. They're either they're not going out or they're dead or they're not driving. And look, I would never go. I, yeah, I yeah, but here's what I don't get. Club. Wait a minute, listen to me. Listen to me. Here's what yeah. I don't get. If I go anywhere in this country. And I walk right. into a comedy club, or I, and there are a bunch of comics there who at least have been around for a while, all right? Yeah. And I say, have you ever heard of Bobby Slayton? They'd suddenly say, oh, best comic ever. He's just, he's one of the best that ever existed. So you're- Comics, re- but, comics would say that, not audience members. They don't know who I am. Well, so it, it's okay. No, because the audience- They don't know who John Lennon is, okay? But believe me, this has been, that's, that's been going on for years. When I point to somebody in the audience, go, keep, I will go back 20 years. Hey, can you name the four Beatles? No, they can't. That was before my time. Well, fuck you, you dumb cunt. It was before your time. How about that guy in a dollar bill? He was way before my time. I know who he is. You know? How about that guy with blackface who did the first talking picture? I know who he is, you fucking retard. People don't know anything about the history of this country. You know? And I'm not talking about political stuff. I'm not talking about FDR and the New Deal. I'm talking Mm -hmm. about just pop culture stuff, which is what comedians talk about. They don't know anything. They don't know the colors of the Civil War, the Confederates, and the blues and the grays. They know nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, but but hey hey you hear the, and and then there'll be comics talking to them and I watch these opening comics. But wait a minute, hey, wait a minute. how about? But yeah. hold on a second, hold on a second. You walk out on the stage, you make people laugh. You're funny, okay? Right. What does that have to do with age? You know, and especially in your act, your references aren't uh, you know no. couched in old stuff and whatever. It's just you telling jokes about things you see. How right. how does that have an age value? Well, okay, okay. Well, first of all, it's become very cliché. Hey, you know the difference between men and women? And I was doing a lot of material. And I was not. You can't the first do, that, to do that anymore. You can't but do it anymore. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's almost like oh, hey, cats and dogs. You know the difference between cats and dogs? Okay, the most cliché, and it doesn't matter how great of a take you have on that, unless you come up with something brilliant. I mean, Leno in the early days was always great. Everybody did McDonald's joke and oh, McNuggets and this and then Jay had the joke about McDonald's. Jay had right. the joke about how small airplane bathrooms were. Jay said, okay, done. We're done. Anyway. Well, wait, wait, political- Jay, it's not that Jay had it, okay? It was just that Jay uh, had a, I hate to call it a bully pulpit, but he had a place where if he told a joke, and it was the same joke you thought of, forget, you can't do it ever again. You no, know? no, well, that wasn't it. I was just saying that he wrote the best jokes about every I think and, and now you know every comic has done a joke about having a baby and you know I, and I, I, I think I said yeah. this on your show last time smoking pot now there's a whole generation of comics that never heard Cheech Chi Chong they never heard of Bobby Slay they never heard of even George, the great George okay, Carlin okay. so they're doing jokes not that they mm. stole them but it's all shit that's been done before and when my wife died I stopped the men and women jokes and the wife jokes and then you know it's just I got sick of doing it, basically. Well, you know, I got tired you, of doing you know, it. You, know, you, you can't do those those uh, women jokes anymore. Well, you can't do them, but I haven't. You can, you I haven't can been do on stage them. Almost, you look, can do I haven't been on stage in yeah. almost two years. Yeah, but you, and, you, you, can't, you, 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 can, you can do them, but you'll never work again. <laughs> I'm not working now. What do I give a shit? You know? <laughs> Rat's ass. Yeah. I don't, look, I don't want to do it. And I see all these comics who don't need the money going back to work because they love doing it. I mean, I see Bill Maher who's making worth a fortune. Uh, I love politic, uh, you know, his uh, real time. But um, um, but at the end of every show, I'm going here next week. I'm going there next week. I'm, he's still on the road. He, I, I, him and Seinfeld and all these guys don't need the money, but obviously they have a great love for doing it. Yes. And again, if I was making yes. that kind of money and not staying at a Holiday Inn Express and getting up and doing some morning radio with some waitress driving me, telling me what her lifetime dreams are, stuck in traffic, you know, <laughs> in Sarasota, Florida. I'm like, oh, fuck this shit, you know? Yeah. So I put away not enough money. You know, I'm still working a little. I'm doing, you know, commercials for my friends at Skechers, who I love, and I'm doing an occasional gig. And, I, you know, I got a little stock. In okay. Them. 
It's so, fine. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, I'm paying uh, my bills. By the way, be happy to know that I just uh, online bought my first pair of Skechers. You're the best shoes ever. Well, I haven't tried them yet, and I hope uh, the size I got was right and all of that. I ordered the size I get in others. So, See, um, there's another thing I can't do online is order shoes. Although with Skechers, I know what size I wear, but it's always, things are always different. I like to go to a shoe store or a Macy's or whatever, try it a pair of whatever, and, and walk around the store like the old days. You know, when they, you oh, know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Although, you know what, that never did work. You ever try, I'm sure it does. You try a pair of shoes and they feel great. And as soon as you walk 10 blocks, you go, fuck, what was I thinking? They said, suck. I'll, I'll, bet, I, I'll <laughs> bet you, I bet you don't remember this, but when I was a kid, and remember, that was back in the Stone Age, right? In a shoe section of your department store or whatever. The metal thing you're going to talk about? The metal thing? No, you put I'm going to talk to you. The t thing you put your feet in and it shows you a Floor, floor, uh, what do you call it? Like an x ray of your feet. No. Yes. The light came on. It was green. It was x rays. And then you looked through this thing and you got to see the bones in your feet. Why? Wait, 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 wait. I mean, you're older than me, but how come they never had that when I was a kid? They I had don't, that big metal I don't know, thing. But, but I that you put I'm, your foot on. I'm still waiting you know? to get foot cancer, you know, from it. Uh, right, right. Uh, but exactly. those were the days where when, you, when they had x rays and it was new and it was, uh, you know, scientific. Hey, to put an x-ray machine in the shoe store to look at your feet to see how your bones are in your feet so they can buy give you a pair of shows it was very un unusual you know? no i remember just going to there was a tom mccann that opened by my house in oh, west tom chester McCann. and i wanted i want to go to tom mccann because i wanted to see the dog inside the shoe because the boy is busted oh, around oh, oh, and no, the dog is dying well, friend well buster and, you know they don't really live there but it's fun to play pretend so buster, look, look, look. buster brown on. was a was a cartoon tom McCann, i'm not buster brown i was, said tom McCann, was a comic buster strip brown. was a comic strip and he had a dog tig and they right. said look for buster brown and his dog tig in right, the right. shoe so. right See, I and remember how did this, all, I remember all how did, this stuff, folks. And how did the song go? Does your shoe have it? Come on, you're good with that. I, I don't know that. Dog inside. I, I never. That was a big commercial. Now, here, let what me, a funny I'll place show for you, a dog. I'll show, you, I'll show you <laughs> how we differ in age, okay? Who yeah. was the host of that TV show? That was before my, wait, that was before, my, which TV show? The, 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 uh, the, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? The show that was sponsored by Buster Brown. And I don't want to well, give Well, first of all, you have to remember something. You grew up on the West well, Coast. I grew up on the East Coast, so there were regional shows. Everybody regional remembers sponsors. it as Andy Devine being the host of that show. Okay, Andy Devine, he kind of talked like me if I had throat cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy Devine. Okay, well, he had a show, uh, not, not not Super Adventure Theater, that was Claude Kushner. No. But I remember watching it, Andy Devine was, when it I was, was, it was on a, a black and white. Something a Andy. And, but before that, and, and, and these world before and that, these, with all yeah, the remember, all yeah. the characters like Froggy the Gremlin, do you remember Froggy yeah, I, the Gremlin? Yeah, I, I remember. And, I remember and, and what was the cat's it. name? Midnight the Cat. Yeah, all right. like, but was, wait a minute, I hold on a second. Four or five years to old. show you yeah. the difference in my age, that show originally on radio and then originally on television was the creation of and starring a guy named Smiling Ed McConnell. Do you remember Didn't him? Know. See? Absolutely not. You don't remember, no. but I do. But but you know what? There's a lot of people I don't remember, but you know, I, I'm i so steeped in nostalgia of, of pop culture, especially television, movies, and music, that over the years, look, you know, when I grew up in the 60s, I had no idea that, I mean, I was a big Rolling Stones fan, so when they did Love in Vain, I didn't know who Robert Johnson was. And of course, I didn't know who half these people were until I saw Buster Poindexter. Right. Oh, that was Arrow from the Caribbean. And so, I mean, I, I, I never knew who people were, but I've made it a point to educate myself, not to tell anybody about it, just so I knew mm -hmm. when I listened to an old blues song, you know, and I have a great blues collection now, and I'll put on, a, I'll put on some music, oh, God, I thought the Beatles originally did that. I thought this was some, you know, and you don't realize this, you know, it, there's so much great music out there. Right. I remember you turned me out to Dr. John, the Night Tripper. I remember I never knew who that lunatic was. Right. I remember hearing him on you and then Alice and Steele, the Night Bird, the WNW play Dr. John. Who's this guy? And he'd been around for years and, you know, Professor Longhair. So I love all that stuff now. So that that guy you just mentioned, McConnell, would have been, never heard of him. Yeah. Never heard of him. Yeah. But you heard about Andy Devine and his show. Well, I remember watching with no, the I same thing. Andy yeah. Devine. Well, what happened yeah. was they decided, well, Smile and Ed's just not with it anymore so they he still owned the show but they just got andy divine to be the uh to be the uh, uh host 
So they should do that for you because you can still own the see, Alex Bennett here, show. Here's, here's, since you can't, since you can't do it anymore, that you're going to Andy Devine. Here's what you're talking about, <laughs> though. Here's what you're talking about. That audience you say would not understand what you're saying. Okay. Right. They would not understand what we're talking about right now. That's why nobody listens to this program. Alex, I don't even understand what we're talking about. I'm just talking out of my ass. Hope it'll be over so I can jump back in my pool. Okay. <laughs> no, but that's, you know what, I, you know, it's funny you mentioned this. Because yeah. right now I'm reading this incredible book that came out in 2017. Uh, Mort Saul's biography, not autobiography. Mm -hmm. written by a guy named James Curtis. Some people turn me on to it. It's called Last Man Standing. Mm -hmm. And I'm only on the third or fourth chapter. They haven't even got to the Lenny Bruce part. And, but they're talking about Enrico, and they're talking about how Mort saw. Um, do you remember Don Steele? I don't know if, I, in San Francisco, the, uh, he, he wrote a column. It wasn't the real Don Steele, the DJ. No. But Don Steele, he wrote a column in the Herb Cain days. Do you remember? No, I do you don't. you remember this guy? No, okay. I don't. Well, anyway. They gave Mort Saul a radio show, uh, in, uh, I think broadcast out of Berkeley, once a week, and he had Stan Kenton on, you know, because Mort Saul was a big jazz yeah, fan. Yeah. And, you know, he would open up the Stan Kenton group and all these jazz bands in San Francisco. And these were clubs that were long gone before I got there. So him and Mort Saul were talking, and I'm reading this in the book, and after 15 minutes, Stan Kenton said, do you think anybody out there understands one word of what we're talking about? So it was the same thing that these guys are so immersed in jazz and, and whatever yeah, they were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. They didn't give a shit that nobody understood. They were talking about what interested them is what we're doing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there's, not, there's, not, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I just figured, what the hell? I'm, I'm, I'm 81 years old. I may as well act like it, you know? Alex, let me explain something to you. When I met you, you were probably 35 or 40. You acted like you were 81 back well, then. Well, yeah, I was practicing. You're practicing, <laughs> and now you kind of grew into it. I was just saying to my girlfriend this morning, my God, I'm 66, I feel so old. She goes, yeah, but you're in the shape of a 50-year-old. I go, well, that's old, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but and I, and I see that Charlie Watts just jumped, dropped out of the Rolling Stones tour because of uh, he had a like a little operation. And I go, he's 80. You know, it kills me that Mick Jagger is 78 and still well, is viable I used, I used to have a, a I used to have a joke about that. I said that Rolling Stones are getting too old so old that the next tour is going to be called the Steel Walker Tour, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have a yeah. Steel something tour at the time. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Forget it. Steel. Instead of the Steel Wheels Tour, nobody will remember what you they know were me. talking I, about. I'm just a radio host. I'm not really a comedian. So. I wish I, I wish I was talking to Andy Devine right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you Maybe stick around, you will be. <laughs> You, do you know how he, you know he got that voice? In case people don't know what we're talking about, go back and watch some old Roy Rogers movies and stuff like that. That's right. He was an old, he was a sidekick, yeah. right? 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 Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Uh, but he was the he was the Western sidekick. But he had this really gravelly voice, and he you know he got that when he was a kid. He fell on a on a stick, and it went in his mouth, and he kind of fucked up his vocal cords, and that's why he, for the rest of his life he talked that way. But he got hired because of that voice. You know? People always ask me what happened to my voice, and I go. I fell on a cock in San Francisco. It, it, and it was yeah. not well, nothing I wanted to remember. Well, you had you had polyps taken out, right? Yeah, a few times. But I, you know, I'm, but I, if you remember when I would get on stage, I would yell all the time. I, 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 and then I realized you don't have to yell with every joke, every punchline. You can mm -hmm. actually, you know. So I started well, doing voice exercises, and yeah. <laughs> I don't yell much anymore. Well, but my I, voice is now permanently callous. I think at the you know, time I talked to you and I said that the way in which I learned to use my voice, and I never got polyps, was I was taught if you can't feel it in your chest, then you're not do doing it right. In other words, right. the sound has to come from here. And I think I told you that, but you never listened to me. Because you never That's listened to I, me. I probably couldn't hear back then either. Yeah. When I told you um, to go into aluminum siding, you never listened to me. I know. And then I saw the movie Tin Men and realized I should have done that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, Remember um, that movie Tin Men, Danny, Danny DeVito. Yeah. I read for I read for that for Barry Levinson. It's so funny. Here's what I love about living in LA. I, I ran into Barry Levinson. I mean, there's a little shopping center right by my house. This mm. little, a great little shopping center. And, I, yeah. and Paul Stanley's up there every day drinking coffee. I see Rod Stewart there. I see John Voight. You know, whoever lives in the neighborhood, George Thorogood, you know. And, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's funny because I saw Thorogood at the grocery store the other day, and I said to him, you know, I'm wondering if I should get. One bourbon, one beer, or one one whiskey, or a beer, and two shots. I don't know what to get. What would you recommend? <laughs> you, know, you know the song he does? Yeah. One bourbon, one scotch, yeah. one beer. Yeah. Anyway, but it, and then I see Paul Stanley all the time, and I always say, 
who likes to rock and roll all night and drink coffee every day? And he rolls his eyes because every time I see him, I do that joke. Boy, but anyway, you know, you know, you know, you know it's, it's got to be like there are, there are actors who have lines they're famous for, and people almost come right. up to them all the time and say them. You know, uh, I but, mean, but, it, but I saw Barry Levinson at the grocery store, and I haven't seen Barry since 2001 or whenever we did the movie Bandits. And yeah. I was that reporter with Bruce Willis and Billy Bob Thornton. So he's online waiting for coffee. And I just rushed up to him and go, I hear the sleep over bands that's out of jail again. I'm doing a big story because I was like a news reporter. And it was just nice. <laughs> yeah. I entertained myself. I'm not sure if anybody else is entertained. And did he look I back go, at you and go, you're who again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By the way, yeah, no, he, he's a great guy. He gave yeah. me a, a great part. Oh, he hey, made that, me read like five, five times. But I read for ten I think. And it was such I a think, bad actor. I, I, think I, that's, I think that's the, one of the biggest parts you've had in movies. In fact, yeah, and it's probably well eight minutes, and yeah, probably seven eight minutes. Maybe probably playing Joey movie. Bishop in the in the in the Rat Pack thing may have been. That might have been might have been more than ten eleven minutes. I was throughout the movie, but no more than thirty seconds to a minute. Well, time. that's the way Joey Bishop's career was. So you know. yeah, and then I don't know. If, wait, I don't know how to do this with my. I'm so I was gonna. You know what? I was gonna reverse my. Um, and then wait, wait a second. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, because I'm really bad with reversing. Hold on a second. Well, I gotta show you this. Okay. You know what? I'm afraid I'm gonna lose you if I if I fuck with anything. Okay. Wait, switch camera. Do I push? Wait, wait, wait. switch. There, okay, wait, wait. there you so, go. Wait. See. The, so there, there. I, I was a Mexican the, in Wayne's World too. Right. You was, were. You I were. Was, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me let me switch back. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, wow, I can't believe I pulled that up. Yeah. That was that was um, yeah. And then wait, wait, wait. Let me show you another one. <laughs> this, this, as long as he's learned on. how to use the camera wait, 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 and reverse. I, I, so that was my first TV appearance. That was Sandy Becker, yes. who was one of the first morning yes, TV, he was. one of the here, coolest. Here in that's, New York. Yeah. That's me singing uh, Popeye the Sailor Man on the wow. Sandy Becker show when yeah. I was five. Okay, but anyway, but it was so funny that um, <laughs> with Wayne's World 2, yeah. I went in to read, it was literally maybe a 20 to 30 second scene, maybe. Yeah. And it was a, Water, I, I was in the credits, watermelon was the, water, the watermelon wrangler. Wrangler. Okay. Okay. And I think if you use the black guy to carry watermelons, that would have been too racist. If you use the Mexican to carry, you know, farm worker, that would have been too obvious. So they use me, which is fine. That's fine. You know, right. My big thirty seconds in in, in Wayne's World too, um, and it took all day to film the fucking scene too. But whatever. Well, what, you know, yeah, yeah whatever. So whatever. So so basically, you're you're not doing the clubs because you know a lot of your material today would be considered wrong. That's not why I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it because everybody was off for a year, and then when it was time to go back, look, I'm doing a corporate gig for all these for these guys in October in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. That will be almost two years that I have been on stage. So in the next month or two, I'm gonna have to go back to the improv. Or, uh, or some place like you're gonna, gonna have to Burbank. work. You're gonna have to work out. I'm gonna have to do that, yeah. and um, um, and I don't really give a shit if people. You know, I'm gonna be performing for a bunch of guys doing like 40 minutes. You know, it's a very very tough gig. They're a great receptive audience, mm -hmm. but um, you know, to not work for two years and just go back cold, that's gonna be tough. So I'm gonna have to go back to the club and do some of the old. Yeah stuff you know and i'm gonna do the chinese stuff and i'm gonna do the women's stuff and you know yeah. the me well, too movement which i'm a little tired of already um you know um i gotta bring this I, to a close and by the way stick around after we're through because i want to say goodbye to you but uh uh what i want you to you do can't is, you what, can't say goodbye on the air well i mean i i want to talk to you after we're through here you know but, is there something you want to talk to me about we can't talk about in front of your imaginary viewers? Yeah, yeah, it's a real personal problem. No, anyway, well, look, anyway, yeah. anyway, uh, yeah. at, for closing, yeah. uh, and since you can't do the material anymore, okay, right. because it's not woke, all right? Right. Uh, tell me the worst woman joke you've ever heard. The the worst, worst woman one. joke I've yeah. ever heard. Yeah, I don't. I can't remember jokes. I don't know. I, I can tell you the best one. I mean, it's a classic. You're not going to write a better joke than if, you know, women didn't have a pussy, there'd be a bounty on their heads. There That's we go. Great. There we go. Boom. 
<laughs> that's the greatest joke. That's one of the greatest jokes I've ever heard. Yeah, it, yeah. The, period, the, the one I know? the one I always liked was why do women have periods, and that's because they deserve it. Right. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of women jokes, you yeah. know. And, um, there's just some great one-liner jokes. You and know? you know what um, they then go? They go, you don't you tell those kind of jokes because you hate women. No, we hate tell those kind of jokes because they're funny. And we hate women. And we hate funny women. first. <laughs> yeah, you know, look, I got a great girlfriend, but she's you know, women are all lunatics. You know, I've never met one that isn't a lunatic. Of you know, and, you know, my girlfriend. Yeah. And she doesn't like me talking about it. Well, always said the same thing. My late wife said, "Why are you yelling? I'm not yelling. I'm a Jew. I'm a New Yorker. This is how I talk." And then the last Jerry Seinfeld special, he did <clears throat> that same line. You know, my wife says or something similar. You know. My wife, how can you yell at me? Because that's how I talk. I yell. I'm not yeah, yelling at you. Exactly. You know? Hey, listen, uh, we've gone way over what I normally go over with anybody, but you're, you're yeah, worth no. every second of it. Every every I moment I have savored here spending with yeah. you. Uh, yeah. Can we do this again? I really lo love doing it. Then, yeah. Then you're going to have to answer to your girlfriend. You, you just talked to him a month ago. You know? Yeah. And, and then you yeah. say, well, we've been best friends for, God, how many years now? Uh, I don't even know. God. I, I've known you longer than Andy Devine. Let's just leave exactly. it at that. Anyway, ladies you know, wait, and gentlemen, uh, Bobby Slayton, he's only, he's not playing anywhere. He just came on here because he's a nice guy and he, and, and, and he did this for me. I'm actually, you know what, in October, I'm actually hosting a show with Gilbert Gottfried. Gilbert has it on his website. Gilbert Gottfried's um, a dirty comedy, a filthy comedy festival or something. Yeah. And they asked me if I wanted to be on it. And I go, I haven't worked. I'll host it with Thea Vidal and a woman. It's two women, Patty Rosborough and Thea Vidal. I said, I'll host it. So that's going to be my big return to stand up. I didn't put it on my website because I'm not really, not my show. And that's, re that's show. really going on the internet. So it's not like exactly stand up, but you know. Anyway. Well, what's that? It, 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 is, it a, is it a thing that's going to no, be No, no, it's a live show. Oh, it's a live hotel in oh. Vegas oh, in great. October. It's on Gilbert's website. So I'm going to host Gilbert's show. <clears throat> so that's my, my big return, you know. Bravo. But I only have to do 10, 15 minutes and host it. So hopefully I'll, I'll be in shape by then. Okay. You know? Well, you can always come in on here and work work out. Okay. Not to say, it's not the same thing. You got to go and do it in the club, unfortunately. I know. I know. Bobby Slayton, ladies and gentlemen. Say goodbye, Bobby. Okay, goodbye, Bobby. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. All right, there's Bobby, and I uh, hope you all enjoyed uh, Bobby Slayton. I, uh, you know, he's an old friend, an old, old friend. Goes back, way back when. God, I'm trying to think. The first time I had him... I think, where, when was I, when did I go to San Francisco? I went to San Francisco in, I think, 1980, and I think that's about when I met him. So if you go, 80, it's 41 years. For, uh, 41 years that I have known Bobby Slayton, and he has been my friend. Wow, how time flies when you aren't doing anything. Anyway, we only got one person waiting in the waiting room, and if that's the case, I just may not even go to the uh, citizen panel and just call it quits early tonight. Uh, but uh, let me uh, just say a few things. Number one, last night was very disturbing to me. Uh, and it was uh, a real problem. Uh, and uh, this one guy who I have been, I think, very nice to. Uh, and, 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 and have... Uh, when he, when he didn't like being on with all the other people, I put him on on Thursday nights all by himself. I kind of accommodated him because I, I liked his wit and I liked his intelligence. And all of a sudden, over the Cuomo thing, he decides to lash out at me. Two nights in a row, by the way. Two nights in a row. But last night, it got to a point where he just hung up after first saying, uh, uh, you're, well, you're washed up. Well, I, you're a has-been. That was the line. You're a has-been. And uh, I thought to myself, yeah, I'm a has-been, but that's better than what he is, which is a never was. Uh, of course, I admit that I'm a has-been. Uh, but, you know, why, why does somebody want to hurt me when I've been nothing but nice to them? That's what I don't understand, and that's what was so disappointing to me last night. And... Um, 
It really bothered me. It bothered me a lot. Let me just talk to the two people that are here. Uh, you know, I'm getting a little tired of this. Audience gets smaller. Citizen panels get smaller. You know, and I always, I always uh, 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 argue that I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit. You know, I'm gonna quit doing this. And uh, then I always keep doing it. And the reason I keep doing it is because of the people that call and the fact that they kind of look forward to doing this and to talking to me and to each other. And uh, now that I don't even have those people, why should I keep doing this? I mean, I'm being very serious about it this time. Uh, so unless I start getting better participation here, I'm out of here, you know. Uh, but let me just uh, 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 turn on the... Uh, uh, the uh, citizen panel thing of which there is uh, no one to speak of there's Jeff Jeff doesn't talk a lot and uh, there's a uh, he's there's also now, blocked again his uh, microphone uh, yeah no, yeah. I'm doing it on purpose and here okay. comes Tony uh, you know he's uh, talking over the plans to steal his next car what <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so unless I start what was that What's that? Who did that? Did what? Who did that? Audio from the show. It wasn't you. Oh, I turned it off. I had you on Gabnet. Oh, sorry. I see. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, at least because so Tony we... thinks the robber was joking last night. I wasn't even. Yeah, I, I thought he was joking in the beginning when he was. I, I don't want to talk about it because he's not here. To, I've gotten but... a lot of very nice uh, notes from people regarding oh. this. You know, uh -huh. regarding it and. Um, uh, people saying, you know, that they they didn't know what, uh, what one person wrote. What is this guy psycho? You know, I mean, it was I I went back and listened to it today with Marjorie, and she couldn't believe what she was hearing. She said, "Why? What 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 did you do?" You know, I, can you see I, the side text from last night on the on the uh, uh, you know the when people it, type on on YouTube no, or whatever. No, I didn't. Yeah, I mean, he, so somebody he, said this guy makes Alan look like an angel. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get your wings tonight. Well, I I don't understand it. I mean, I've been I, I think I've been nothing but accommodating to the guy, you know, encouraging Absolutely. to the guy, and so on. Then because we disagree on something, he suddenly becomes. I mean, it was just downright mean. Like Doctor Jekyll. Yeah, it was downright mm -hmm. mean, and yep. um, and then then to show you how. Um, how trite he is. Uh, I can tell when somebody quits my Facebook page. And all of a sudden I was down to 499, 4,999. And uh, so I, I, uh, I went over to his page and I was not a friend. I was, he defriended me. Oh, and I was also I'll one less on subscribers on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So he went there and detached himself as a subscriber to YouTube, and uh, I thought that I thought that was rather trite, you know. I, I was just I've just been nice to him and I've been accommodating to him, and I didn't deserve that. So I rushed out and get, called Bobby Slayton today and said, "You want to do a, a thing?" So yeah, you know, we didn't need him tonight. That was a good show with Bobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, that's why Bobby was on. Well, he would have been on anyway, but I was looking for a place to sandwich him in, and all of a sudden, an opening appeared. You know. I'm shocked. Plus, I, I haven't mean, heard I'm from late. Andy in what? a long, long time. Who? Andy. Andy? Who's Andy? Yeah, the cowboy. Andy? Oh, Andy Devine. Devine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I remember Andy. You don't, you don't know who Andy Devine is, do you, Tony? No, who's that? See, they, he, <laughs> I think he knows all about that kind of stuff, but no, he doesn't. What's that? <laughs> Just look I'm up really Andy Devine after the show. Let me show Google it for you. I'll do it later, yeah. yeah. I stay up yeah. till 3 in the morning <laughs> watching TV. <laughs> yeah, I was shocked. I replayed the show. I was like, wow. This whole AM <laughs> formal thing, hit a, you hit a hot button. I knew you would do it when you posted it up. I was working on comics, and I saw you post it up. On the Cuomo on the Facebook page, and says, "Here comes the shit show." I said, "What do you mean? Here comes 
Oh, wow. I was working on comics when you posted that Facebook thing, groping or whatever, and I knew yeah. they were going to start going right to it like flies. Okay. <laughs> well, wait, let's wait. Watch, let's watch the words. Watch the words. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brian's daughter's on. Uh, Brian, uh, oh, uh, Adrian, Adrian has Adrian. Found, found the way to be able to get on the show here. And she pushed all the right buttons, right, Adrian? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and they, her daddy doesn't know she's on the show. And right there, on. And there she is. Mm. See? Yeah. See? Mm. And we enjoy having you here, by the way. The only thing is, we, there's certain things we can't talk about, which is just as well anyway. Sure. Where's your, oh, where's your, oh, here comes your daddy. Uh, How you doing? Okay, get up. Say bye. <laughs> Say bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. Turn the computer off now. Okay, and the same to you, oh, too. Oh. The same to you, too. Bye. Hello, bye bye. Right. Oh. You know, I don't know when the first time was that he put her on, but she has grown up on this show. I mean, Absolutely. you know, yeah. how old was she the first time you put her on, Brian? Uh, I first came on a year and a half ago, so she was four. Yeah, and now she's five and a half, I guess. Yeah, she's getting big. And and is she? She <laughs> yeah, we've seen her grow up. And and uh, 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 wait a minute, I see her. She's <laughs> like a little ghost. <laughs> she's got a great sense of humor. So uh, she's funny. She's just funny. Yeah. Would have to be to be your daughter. Yeah. Yeah. She better be. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, say, say bye-bye, say goodnight, Grace. Anyway, but I got a lot of nice uh, pieces of email today from people who were, who were really bothered by what they saw and heard and word that I was felt hurt, and I really did feel terrible. I mean, it made me feel really rotten. I was feeling rotten today. But I'll tell you what happened today. I, 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 I know I'm getting older because you can sucker me now. I get a call. And I pick it up, right? And it's a woman who says, hi, this is Medicare calling. We just want to check a few things about your card. Uh-oh. Wait, yeah. wait a minute. And she starts reading off all the things that are on the card and about me. You know, Bennett Schwarzman, yeah, you live in 1925, blah, 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 blah. On and on and on and on. And it, she is absolutely... She's, she knows everything about me, and I'm not giving her any information because I don't mm -hmm. want to give information. And we get to the point, she says, uh, what, now what is your ID number on your card? And I said, well, I don't feel comfortable giving that out. She says, well, it starts with, and then she gives the first four numbers of what it starts with. So I gave her the rest of it, you know. Oh. Whoops. Uh, and uh, I... Uh, <laughs> And then she says, okay, well, what we want to do now is we have to turn you over to our shipping department. I'm going, what? <laughs> so she... Turned, no, what you do is call up social, the Social well, Security and get a new ID number. Uh, uh, no, I, I don't need a new ID number. At least they didn't suggest that when I called them. No, you got to do it now, whether they suggest it or not. Really? They don't call you. They don't call you. No, 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 no. Well, let me finish. Let me finish the story. Then I'll tell you. I mean, I did okay. call. I did call Medicare. Okay. Okay. So anyway, um, um, I, and this guy comes on and he goes, "Okay, well, we we, we want to send you something for your arthritis, a brace or something." And I'm going, "What?" Oh, yeah. Hmm. And I said, uh, "I don't think so." And he says, "Well, then your card has just been canceled." I'm going. Probably playing a game. Well, no, of course it wasn't canceled. But I called um, Medicare because I was I was worried about this whole thing. And the woman there said, "Yeah," she said, uh, "We'll put this a notation of this in your account and so on." And uh, uh, you know, if you go back to uh, come on to Medicare every month and make just make sure there's nothing charged to Medicare that you didn't have it done to you, you know, and um, just keep on top of that and said that they probably, then there's no problem. But, uh, you know, I mean, this is, I just change it. I had one of those and they, they suggested that they had my card and I had it changed. Mm -hmm. I changed it. Yeah. What do you, is it easy to change? 
Yeah, you just call them up and they'll say, we'll give you a new number and they send you a new card. But yeah. you have to go through all the crap of going through your doctors. And when every time you go to the doctor, you got to say, I got a new card and the whole bit. Mm-hmm. But because what they do, they're going to hold on to that card and then they'll start selling it. And that number will get pushed off to somebody else and somebody else. And then they may do not do anything with it, but somewhere, some down the line, something will happen to it. Okay. Well, maybe, just I, maybe, for peace maybe, of maybe, mind, maybe I changed mine. Maybe it, 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 but, well, the woman at Medicare didn't suggest I change it. Yeah, I, I, that's what they said to me too. But I said I wanted to change it. Oh, okay. So if you want, just to for my peace of mind. Well, that's good to know. Because I didn't know who it was. Yeah, I'll be at Medicare age in a couple of years. That's good. Good to remember. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but as she, you know, I, as she didn't tell me, you know, you've got to change your number or anything like that. You know, so uh, yeah. I, I, I don't think there's much they can do with it because they can try and charge something to it. But if uh, if I say, hey, this, you know, this uh, this particular uh, uh, charge uh, isn't something I did, I don't have to pay for it, you know. And yeah, that, but you don't see those for like 60, 90 days down the road. No, I can, I can go online and, and I, I get up. You can get them pretty much all the ones that were uh, about five days ago are on there. I looked. Yeah, but yeah. if you don't know it's there. Yeah. Then they send you that paper. Yeah, but I think what they were trying to do was they were trying to like charge me for something, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, they, they, there's that one. There's a couple of companies that are out there trying to push devices, yeah. and they push you know arthritis and back devices and things like that, and that's what they had tried to do to me. I see. Okay, but they, yeah. but they called up and said we got to check and make sure about your Medicare and yeah. You know. But because I turned them down, the guy says, "Well, we're canceling your Medicare card." Company. Yeah. What? Well, I well, the reason I called Medicare is I just want to make sure it was still in force. You know. Yeah, it was but, still in force, but I said as long as they have that number, I think that I think that they have my number. I said I wanted to change it. Yeah. So I changed. I'll it. give a call tomorrow and see what another person thinks about it. You know. Yeah, it's you know it, it was just for my peace of mind. Yeah, I fe- I I just <laughs> felt like such a sucker. Oh, and then later on today, I get another call, different guys. Another accented guy, same pitch. We're calling from Medicare. I'm going, okay. They may have passed it on already. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. It was the same, it was the same identical pitch. We wanted to check out some things on your card. I said, You're phony. What are you saying? I said, You're a phony. He says, Well, fuck you. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. He probably told you, fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah, go fuck yourself. And I went, Oh, well, yeah, you must be Medicare because that's what Medicare does. They tell me all the time to go fuck myself. <laughs> every every 30 days in a bill. I'm just going to assume, I mean, there's nothing I'm going to be responsible for, okay? <clears throat> they could charge something to Medicare, but they're the ones committing fraud, and I'm not going to have to pay a penny on it because I didn't do it, you know, so... It's not like it's not it's not like a credit card where they could charge something on the credit card. You know what I'm saying? No, they just make your life hell. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it if it becomes a problem at all, I will ask Medicare to change my get send me a new card. How long did it take you to get a new card? Uh, maybe two weeks at the most. Oh, really? Week. Well, suppose yeah, it was pretty fast. Yeah, but suppose you need to go to a doctor and you don't have your new card. They use your old number and then they just whip it right over to the new number. Oh, I see. Okay. It's pretty quick. In other words, I could still use the old number. Yeah, when it's in transit, they know that it's in tra- you know being changed. Yeah, well, I'll call them tomorrow and just say, hey, do you think maybe it'd be a good idea if I, you know, if I if I changed it? Hmm. Uh, but I mean, it was it, I just felt like such a dope, you know, because everything this person was saying, they had my name, my address. Yeah. You know, uh, they had uh, they had uh, you know the only other thing I gave them was my uh, my doctor's name. Mm. Um, uh, and as soon as I gave them the name, she had, the, she says, yes, he's located at blah, 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 his phone number is blah, blah, blah. Quick so, search. Well, I don't, it was so fast that I don't know if I could have got searched it that fast, you mm. know? So I, you know, I really, I really didn't get it very well uh 
it seemed legitimate only in that there was so much information outside of the ID that she had. She even had the four first four numbers of my ID. But that could be mm -hmm. some kind of, you know, standard numbers that they use for location or something like banks do on the credit cards. I, yeah, I, like yeah. routing numbers and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, well. Your social security number, mm -hmm. the first three digits tell you the state you were born in. Really? What state were you born in? California. What's your first three numbers? Five five four. Well, mine's five, five seven. Six, oh. Mine's five seven three. And mine's five six zero. Oh. Mine's different. Well, but <laughs> five five four, <laughs> five, five, four is not is not. It has to born. do with the state you were born and the year you were born. I think. Well, oh, yeah, the, it, it's based on the state. I don't know if it's based on the year, but it changes. The number changes as they run out of the the last. What is it? Seven digits, eight digits, six digits. Yeah, but whatever. Uh, so they change it. But and you remember when it used to be the ID number for your for your uh, uh, Medicare was your Social Security number plus B, I think. Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah. Then they went into the scrambled numbers. Yeah. yeah. Letters. Yeah, but I'll which wasn't too long ago. Well, I'll give them a call tomorrow and just say, do you think I should change my card? You know. Social Security is not a real good way to protect anybody anymore. It, it's so easy to be found. Mm. Yeah. Well, I get all kinds of calls every day. Yeah. And my, my first uh, strategy is I look at the card, and if I know who the name is, mm. then I talk to them. If I don't know the name, like, just delete them. Yeah. Them to send you yeah. pictures of themselves first, Jeff. Well, she gave me, she, I think she actually gave me, she said, here's my identification number. If you need to, to believe me, here's my identification uh, number. And she gave yeah. me an one, identification two, three, number. Four. What? One, two, three, four, here's my ID yeah, number. Yeah, but, but, it, but, but she seemed, <laughs> it, it, it just seemed like she knew, she like she had my card right in front of her. I mean, mm. that's... Well, you know what you do? You throw them off and say, no, that's not my number. Mm -hmm. Can you give me the number? And see if they come back with it. Well, uh, she said she. Uh, I, you know, when I called um, um, uh, Medicare, I said, "Well, I just want you to make sure that my card is still working, okay?" And she said, "Yeah, it looks like it is." I said, "Do you have my number there, my ID number?" And she says, "I can't. I not allowed to say that to you." Exactly, yeah. and mm. that's exactly the way that it works. Is they don't. They don't. Or she didn't have that. She didn't have that information on her computer. Right. Yeah. They don't call you. You have to call them, and then right. you go through the whole security thing. Right. Then you go through all that stuff, and it's well, online. I think it was more that they were trying to sell me something. Yeah, that's what it was. And use my credit, use my my card, my uh, my Medicare as yeah, a way of, as the way of paying for it. Yeah. Yeah. And but they did it in a sneaky way, but. Now I, uh, you know, I'm sorry because I didn't buy their stuff. I, I they got rid of my uh, thing altogether. I haven't got uh, my card isn't good anymore, and I, I don't have a Medicare. But she said, just check your Medicare account every month and just see if there are no charges on there that you don't know. Okay, and mm -hmm. if there is, please then contact us. Meanwhile, she says I've made a notification on your chart or whatever it is I have about this call so that they know that your 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 account might be compromised you know so. yep whatever you know uh i i, I did but i just you know when is this government going to do something about that i'll tell you what i was i was filing fcc complaints for months i'd go onto the fcc site and i'd just cut and paste phone numbers onto that site and you never hear nothing about well, it. Well, the thing that gets me about it is aren't we working our asses off to try and make sure that people like China and Russia can't hack our uh, our phone systems and our electrical grids and so on? Well, if they can do that, I think they can do something to stop these calls. Well, what's even worse is they're now going after they're they're using your actual phone number to robocall other people because i get local people's numbers that show up on my phone mm -hmm. local 
people that live in town here mm-hmm. show up on my phone and then you know I don't answer it but I'll call it back yeah and they answer and they say I, I you know I go you just called and they said no I didn't call I said well my, your number was on my phone no I didn't call and then I've had people call me and say hmm. uh, you just called me a few minutes ago what did you want uh, no I didn't call you Hmm. Well, robocall mm-hmm. used my number to call someone to, you know, they use your number to call someone. The oh. term is that they call it spoofing. Spoofing, whatever. They yeah, they no. use your numbers to call I've someone. Seen it. Your number I've shows seen up on their phone. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. Well, yeah. she tried to tell I've me. I've seen my own phone number on my own phone pop up. This guy, yeah. this guy <laughs> tried to tell, this woman tried to tell <laughs> me, and then the guy tried to tell me I've got arthritis, right? And I said, uh, no, which I do. I have a little bit, but it's, it's, I've never had it in any medical record. Okay. Uh, but they were trying to, I think, they said, we're going to send you a brace. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm I thinking, $10, yeah, they want to use my thing to charge the brace off. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, get the money. And they maybe they would even send the brace, if we're all yeah. I know. When they tell you it's an a, like a wrist brace, you say... You know, I'm a quadriplegic. I'm sorry, I don't really need one. Well, I mean, I just, I, I, I just, I've, I kept telling this woman. I said, I do not feel comfortable about this. And then she said, Well, you have it. It says here that you have a cholesterol problem. Do we? And you're taking drugs for cholesterol. And, oh, they really cracked your. Uh... But no, they didn't crack anything. You know, if you think about it now, if you mm-hmm. think about it right now. Uh, I don't think they cracked anything. If I said to, uh, I, I if, if I, Kevin, if, I think if you I, ought to get another number. If if I said to Kevin, uh, Kevin, uh, or or uh, Jeff, okay, Jeff, uh, uh, you're taking medicine for cholesterol, aren't you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> See. Yeah, but it, it, if you're older, that's a good assumption, that's right? A good assumption. That's right. is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that it's makes you feel like they drugs. know what they're talking about, and they're who. You think they are? Yeah. So I mean, you know, I uh, I uh, 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 just uh, you know. Who on the panel is? I mean, I'm, I'll I'll, I'll give them a call if I have time tomorrow. I you know I I had to wait like ten minutes to talk to them today. So, um, but hmm. I'll just call me. She didn't suggest anything like you know changing the number or anything like that. So, in fact, uh, 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 Kevin just said that when he talked to them. He said, "I want to. I should. I change my card." And they said, "No, you don't have to." But, but, but you know, who's he? Who's he on the phone to? I wonder. If I do the gardens Thursday. It, what? Oh, yeah. Oh. Talk louder, Brian. You're going to the gardens Thursday. I'm on the fucking show. Leave me alone. Oh, oh sorry. It's obviously <laughs> not Adrian. It's not Adrian. I'm Adrian. No. Not, not Adrian. You're talking to. <clears throat> Priorities. Yeah. Stay no, away I, from Dad while he's on the show. No, I was reminding my son it's Thursday, which is garbage day. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah it's good I'm on the fucking show. Reminds him of garbage. Yeah. Well, does he take the thing out to the curb? He's they. The kids have to empty all the garbage, just put them out to the curb, and yeah, all that stuff. Replace the bags. Oh, okay. Stephanie, replace the bags. Let's see. No. Oh. Yeah, I had the same job. Oh really? The trash yeah. out. Yeah. But I'm on that, Wednesday. You have no more kids at home. That's why. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> See, you, I'm the only you, kid left. In Jeff's neighborhood, you got to be careful. Lock your cars around his house on Wednesday. Yeah. Now my <laughs> my other problem in life is that I'm tired again tonight. Incredibly tired because I can't get a full night's sleep. And the reason I can't get a full night's sleep is they're pointing our building. Mm. Um, and I wake up, like, I want to, I like to sleep till 10, 10 30. Because I go to bed about 2, 2 30. Okay. Right. Uh, I, I go to bed at den- dental time, tooth hurting. Mm. Anyway. Uh, uh, I got to remind that for the kids. Hold on. That's cute. <laughs> I got to write that one down, too. Adrian will like that one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so um, uh, I, I I'm I'm trying I'm sleeping and all of a sudden, blah, 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 I'm just and it 
I don't know. They seem to be working my window for the last <laughs> week. I don't <laughs> know how many bricks are that bad by my window. They probably watch the show and they know they're driving you nuts. And then I get a little relief because they go down one level, but they're still down there going, meow, meow. Yeah. Throw your hot coffee out the window. That'll get them away from it. Yeah, yes, so yes, Brian. Don't they tell you that they're doing that? Don't the, I mean, I know you're in court with the landlords, but I mean, doesn't somebody like give you a flyer, say for the next month they're going to be doing this? Oh, what do you mean the next month? I found out there's six months. There's but six more months of this. They told wow. you that? Oh yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, they have they have to do it. I don't know if they did it since the building was built back in 1900. Okay, uh, because what happens is the mortar between the bricks gets bad, that's and true. it has to be cleaned out and new mortar put in. So that's what they're doing. They're remortaring the building. And so they need to, this noise is them getting the mortar out that's there. So um, that's that's you know it's not uh, not a lot of fun. Not a lot of fun. Anyway, what what's happening in the news? Anything? You know, I'm so sick COVID's of it. COVID's picking up. COVID's picking up. Yeah, again. I'm so oh, sick yeah. of hearing about it though. You know, yeah. I mean, oh. now it now supposedly Moderna says uh, they're they're. Uh, Vaccine is good for they know for six months with ninety three percent effectiveness. Mm. Okay, but after that they think we probably will have to get a booster. Mm. So, well, the, the, some of us like you and I, Alex and, and Jeff, mm -hmm. we all are close to our six months. Well, I'm close to my six months. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I am too. We're the now, same time. The question is, how much does it go down after six months? It might go down to ninety percent. Right. You know, we don't right. know. Uh, but they're wow. saying this winter, probably, most people who got the Moderna will have to go and get. Uh, they're saying this for Pfizer, too. Yeah. Which is what I got. I think they just want to sell more juice. I think you're right. I think you're right. I mean, I if, you're, if, store, if you're Pfizer, yeah. you're Moderna, aren't you going? Well, look at their stocks. Their stocks are going up. I mean, it's not but, like Moderna <laughs> or, uh, or Pfizer are these... Uh, you know, these public service groups, you know, uh, they just wanted to get in there before anybody else. And what's happening with the Johnson and Johnson? It, it's kind of, oh, in, Eng in England, they're you making. Know, I never liked working that company. <laughs> One of what I'm saying. Would, they, well, they make, they're doing okay in the stock market now. I know, but. I have stock in both them and Pfizer. I don't know why their stock's good, because they just had to pay out billions on the oxycodone uh, thing yeah. and and the uh, yeah. baby powder. Yeah. Oh yeah, we yeah, forgot the baby powder. We forgot yeah. the baby powder. That's Remember right. when you kid. when you were growing up how Johnson and Johnson was one of those just wonderful names? My mother used to always throw that at anyway. yeah, There was the no company, generics. You would love the company because they had the baby powder. Yeah. Well, who yeah. can hate a company that puts out baby powder? But they didn't know <laughs> it was it was made mm -hmm. out of babies. Uh, but uh, baby powder, and then uh, they made the band aids because when you had an owie, mm -hmm. it made it feel better. You know. Yeah. In fact, I I wonder if you get the Johnson and Johnson, and then they put the band aid on your arm. Is it a Johnson and Johnson? I don't know. Okay. Just hey, a, not? I wasn't asking you. He's just asking in general. That, that was observational humor. But yeah. I I still think that you know our company's taking the variant very seriously where we have our new plus product coming out i hope i can say that we have our new plus product coming out to help help out with the variant but i don't know if they're you know they're doing anything about vaccines or anything else they're just treating this like like the mm -hmm. regular the regular covid and i think that it's a lot different I, I know there's a lot of people that aren't vaccinated that are going through it but i still think that since more people aren't vaccinated it's still going to mutate and i think well, well yeah. Are making adjustments like the vaccine and stuff. They're just treating it like this A product, and as going to B right now, if it goes to C, they're going to be way out of whack. Or at least our company, we're trying to keep up with that, and trying to make sure we're testing for the right stuff. So yes, the, the thing that scares me is kids right now. The first COVID that went through, call it A or whatever they called it, did not affect younger kids very much. This one, the Delta has got so many children's hospital reporting in the news 
that they're like full of really sick kids that are near death. This is this is such selfish fucking people in this country that couldn't go out and get a shot. Yeah. yeah. They show on CNN tonight, they show the guy in the hospital, him and his wife unvaccinated. They both have COVID. One guy's on the respirator, the breather, and he's talked the ventilator. And he's being interviewed by Don Lemon. Well, he isn't on a ventilator if he can be interviewed. Yeah, you can't talk when you're on a ventilator. <laughs> well, yeah, he had, he had the thing over his mouth. Yeah, and, a mask, did, maybe. and was talking. And you, know, you could barely understand him, but he's just like, I should have taken it. Please, everybody take it. And it's like, why are you interviewing these guys? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we, I mean, they're all Republicans, Don. Leave them alone. What it could have, should have. Let them die. Who yeah. cares? Assholes. Oh, boy. I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. I'm sorry. Okay. Hey, good night. Yeah. Why well, don't I just yell at you, say fuck you a couple times, and I'll hang up, and then you'll get mad, and then you Well, no, you have show. to finish up by saying uh, you're a has been. You're a has been. I have to call him. A, I have to call him a Republican too. Oh, you know I, what? Phil, I was talking to Phil. Alex. You know what he thought he called you? He hung up. Phil told me a horse's ass. Phil said to me. Oh, that my grandfather used to love saying that. You're well, a horse's he, ass. He, he, he might have called me something like that. I forget, but he he told, he told me to go fuck myself several times. Yeah, he did. I was, yes, he I'm so in shock over that. He it was said, all the Cuomo. You. you don't think Cuomo hit on him, do you? What? You don't think Cuomo hit on Robert, do you? Maybe that's why he's all annoyed. <laughs> or maybe he might have been well, the that must be Alex, what's the thing you're thinking again? What did you say? I, I don't want to make a joke, but I like how you described it. What? Remember the finger with Cuomo? <laughs> Finger with Cuomo. The finger with Cuomo. He did like a line. You were saying, <laughs> remember the line with his finger with the state trooper. Remember? Oh, oh, oh. Where he, yeah, he, he down, down the back yeah. of the state trooper. Uh, I, mean, I don't want to. Robert's, be, let, Robert's let, look, just okay, jealous it, that it wasn't him. Look, anybody who wants to call back. it creepy behavior it is, is yeah. perfectly right in assuming that it's creepy behavior. It is, yeah. But it's not. I mean. Come on. Okay, so now they want to charge him, perhaps with crimes. Okay. Oh, what's the crime? Now I yeah, want to be there. It. I want to be there when the judge says, "All right, what's he being <laughs> charged with? <laughs> Running his finger down a woman's spine." Lock him up. <laughs> wow. We can't put murderers away. They're going to put him on a crime. But Come what on. I heard is most of these crimes they could joke, charge though. him with are all misdemeanors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he didn't really. So why if they're going to we... charge him, then they ought to charge Gates. Oh well, you know, here's, because he here, ran his finger uh, in a okay. lot of other places with children. Here's something I want to talk about. I want I mean, to talk about the Republicans versus the Democrats. Okay, yeah. the Democrats are really yeah. assholes. Okay, because when one of their kind gets accused of something like Cuomo had. Do they defend him? No. no. No, they all pile on him. Right? The Republicans now, I don't care. Him. Listen, I understand the guy, is not, the guy is not well loved. And when I mean, you see people pile on people, it's certainly because they, they not, people do not think kindly of them. All right? But the Republicans would never do that. You know? I mean, look at how they defended Trump. And this and man is a, this man is perhaps guilty of sedition. Absolutely. All right. You know, uh, 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 the, the uh, and, and Matt the Gates. Uh, Matt Gates is still on all those committees. He's right? still a congressperson. The Democrats, on the other hand, the minute something like this happens, they all have to be politically correct, and and they automatically they, they don't go well. Let him. Let's see if he wants to say he's sorry. You know, if you've seen the error of his ways or whatever. But no, immediately, Kirsten Gillibrand, he's got to quit. You know, he's yeah. got to leave. And I hope I'm somebody going, votes her at off. Well, I mean, it, it, as I said last night, it's enough to make me become a Republican because the Democrats, am I wrong, are pussies. I agree. You know, I'm not saying they had to defend Cuomo. No. They just shouldn't have jumped on him. Oh, you know? you're right. And right. and let's face it, he's been a he. They had a they had a a group of people who looked at this situation, and they decided that perhaps he did some improprieties, but he's not been found guilty of anything. Do you? And you're you asking him to leave office? 
Do you think the Democrats are doing this because the 2022 elections are coming up? I think they're doing it because they're pussies and they're whores just like the Republicans are. But they're their own brand of whore. They're all politicians, okay. so yeah, that's... You know. Thieves, liars, losers, you know? Yeah. I mean... Hey, Alex, you know, here's a question. I, I, I was too small when Ted Kennedy ran the boat car into the water. Yeah. Did they defend him on that? Because he just got up and said, you know what? what, what? No, no. So they were going to get rid of him back then, too. And you figured, geez. I don't even know if there was an investigation. I was going to say, like, what happened? He got His father over, talked left. to the police and it was done. Well, the story that I, that, 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 that I've kind of heard of what really happened to Chappaquiddick, uh, in which um, a woman drowned in Ted Kennedy's car mm -hmm. when it went off the Chappaquiddick Bridge, and then he swam to shore. And left on this. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I don't think he called the police till the next morning or whatever. But the story goes that what might have really happened is that she kind of got drunk and climbed into the back seat of his car and oh, passed out. I was trying to give him head no, when no, he lost no, control. Wait a minute, let, me, let me finish. Okay, That's let's it. not go for the salacious, Alan. Uh, let's stick with the, with the story yeah. as they say it probably happened. And that she was passed out in the back of the, uh, the car. And when it went off the bridge, the reason he didn't try to get her out is he didn't know she was there. Oh, okay. That explains That's that. the, the, what I, what, the, the kind of this explanation I've heard on a lot of occasions. You now, whether that's that true or not, I have no idea, you know. But if he just simply had a drunk woman in the back of his car, he'd be, he'd be out of, he would be out of office immediately. Be asked to quit the Senate by Kirsten Gillibrand. You know, and that's what you got I'm... a young-looking daughter there, Kevin. What's that? Said so you got a young-looking daughter there. What you about thirty? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you rubs my back. Yeah, right on. Yeah, but so I mean, you know, I mean, I just think that the Democrats need to get their crap together and quit quit piling on each other and wait for the evidence to come out let <clears throat> let people hold trials or whatever need to be done like impeachments or whatever and then ask him to leave but prior to that you just say well we're going to wait and see uh, you know what happens here and let's face it let's be honest about it the uh, the woman who was the uh, attorney general this Letitia whatever her name is uh, uh, she is planning on running for governor Oh, okay. So okay. And this guy, Kim, I can't remember the story on Kim, but there was some kind of something that happened hmm. when he was either running for office or something where he was yelling and screaming and there was this, all, this kind of fighting. He's not reputable. Not particularly reputable. So this is not Andrew Yang that you're thinking no, of? No, no. Right? This is uh, June uh, Kim, I think is his name. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, 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 you know, so. I don't know that this, this was an, a totally impartial panel. I think, however, that Cuomo caused the matter of his demise by saying that he wanted the attorney general to look into this. And then now that it's been looked into, he's not happy with the results. Uh, and if he wants to say that, you know, people have ulterior motives to find him guilty, I would, I would go along with that, you know. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, I think until there is some kind of formality of legal formalities or whatever that have happened, nobody should be asking him to leave office. He should stay in office until it's proven that he was, he did not do well by his oath of office, okay, and that he should be impeached, for instance. There are certainly okay. more Democrats asking him to leave office than Republicans right now. He, well, yes. Absolutely. That's exactly your point. Yeah, yeah, and they're all lining up to try and save their own asses. You know. Yeah, but you, hmm? the one thing you kind of pass and you should. Yeah. Women have a different attitude today as they did maybe five years ago. Right. Ten years ago. Right. And I, I agree with you on that. And you and you got to respond to that. No, the, I and I have no and I have no quarrel with that. I do have. And, and not only not only do they have attitudes, they want to change. Well, the I world. I do have a problem 
where uh, p women are reacting to mores which exist today but didn't exist when the particular event took place. You know, it's like, hey, you know, we guys wanted the memo on this one and we didn't get the memo on it. Sure. You know, and, and uh, I mean, I, I, I never worry about my behavior because I think my behavior most of my life has been admirable, okay, and fine and decent, all right? But um, because no matter how horny I was, no matter how gorgeous a woman was, I would never throw myself on her unless she wanted me to because I didn't want anybody didn't want me, all right? But the point of the fact is is that um, we didn't get the memo. I mean, there are some things I may have done that today they would kind of question, you know. Uh, like I actually came on to a woman. But who didn't, you know? We did those things. And not, but if you, it's a question of how do you come on to a woman? you make her feel uncomfortable about it or are you just very much a gentleman about it and if she turns you down you go well okay fine you know but i i don't know i just i'm i'm funny about all of this i just uh, i i i just think i want fairness is what i want and i have a great sense of fairness and i and i think that uh, i think that Cuomo was very <clears throat> stupid if he did any of these things because he was in a position of power and he should know it would come back to bite him in the ass and if he didn't know it was going to come back to bite him in the ass, he was very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He, naive. He, not naive. I think he was very, he, he felt he could get away with it. Self-centered. You know, that he was the one that could get away with it, yeah. Uh, uh, I think he had well, certain... You notice most of the people that we talk about have power, are famous, mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. If this was happening to you or me walking down the street... It probably would never be brought up, you know. What you're talking about, the art of pursuit, as we call it, that's not an issue. Yeah. In most cases, uh, but most of the time now we're talking about people of power, people of fame, people Public of figures. You know, yeah, that are that are well, noted, noted, and, and that's where the issue is. People that are <clears throat> that are uh, that are that are known, mm -hmm. and that's where the difference is in well, most cases. I was, I think you could say I was fairly famous in San Francisco. Sure, and if, yeah. it, if this happened to you, and that time, if that, if this type of environment happened back in the 80s, you'd have been screwed. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. 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 You, you, the, the story you told about well, the uh, trip over to Italy, uh, you'd have been done. But what do you mean trip over to Italy? Uh, well, what, was it to Spain? Italy or wherever? You West know, when Spain. you had your, you know, with News, Lori and all with that. With Lori, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, you, that wouldn't, you wouldn't be here today. Well, you, I, you I think I would have be been here long, because, because a long gone, long gone has been. <laughs> Lori was would be decent enough not to lie about what went on. Okay, what right. I worry about. I'll tell you what I worry about is the woman that would come along and lie about that something. Correct. Going on. And I think that does happen. I'm and the not, fight that you would have to go through to get out of it. Well, that men today are disbelieved before Correct. they're believed, and women are believed before they're disbelieved. And because think, of the history. Because mm -hmm. of the history. And, and that doesn't make it right. No. I mean, that makes No, it doesn't. It doesn't, but there is a bad history as well. Yeah, but it does put a man at a bad disadvantage. It today. does. It does. You know, and... But, and, 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 but, you know, you also got to understand that there are some idiots out there that screwed up for us, like Wein, Weinstein. And, yeah, oh, of you know, course. He made you know, us, those kind of people fucked up the history for people like us. He made us all look bad. Yes, Tony. You know what I was going to say? I was thinking about the Cuomo situation, right? Uh -huh. You know what? You know what? I mean, I think he is a... He's, he's slimy. I, I think he, so. He's a bully. But here's what I, here's what I don't get, yeah. though, which I wish they would have did. Don't you wish they would have came forward, one of these people, when it happened or a few? You know what I'm saying? Why wait so long? It wasn't like they went to bed or anything. I don't know when could. these things took place, to be honest with you. So I can't... Uh, oh, okay. Go, but I, I mean, that. let's say it was a few years ago. For some, I mean, it wasn't like <clears throat> Weinstein where he actually took him to bed. I'm not saying he, I'm excusing what Cuomo did. But being the fact that it wasn't on that level, I guess it's not for what they're saying. 
Don't you think one of them could have came forward to say, listen, I felt inappropriate behavior and took well, it to somebody? I, I'm not. And, and Look, please, Como don't. people aren't that old, are they? Those women aren't no, that no, old. They aren't so they that old. couldn't have been that long ago. Was it? But let me, let me bring something up here, and I'm not defending Harvey Weinstein. I think the man, I, 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 when I first heard of his behavior before they ever arrested him for it, you know, because it was all over Hollywood. Everybody mm -hmm. knew it. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but the fact is that because he was Harvey Weinstein, he got it worse than if it were Tony Magno. Me? Okay. Yes. You know, they would probably, yeah. Tony Magno, they would say, that's bad boy slap on the wrist. Of you know? course. But, but and, and, you know, look how, they go, how they've ruined Woody Allen's career over just false assertions. Yeah. You, you know, there's no that. proof that any of those things took place any of that, that that ever took place. And yet, you know, the man has a hard time finding financing for his movies and actors to be in them. Can I ask you a question, Alex? You don't mind me asking this. Being the fact that you were in the spotlight saying, doing your radio, what, I, wouldn't you have been scared? Like, who can you be friends with? Like, wouldn't you always oh, be afraid I, of- Oh, I'll tell you, I would be very careful about dating now. <laughs> I really would. Would you even want to go yeah, out of the yeah. house? Like, would you have to say like, yeah, oh, if, even meeting anybody, yeah, like yeah. friends, even not even if it were if it were to date, like, if, if, if it were it was back, different in those days. But I mean, right, but if it, it were if it were today, and I was in the same position, uh, show business wise, I totally. I wouldn't even date. I right. really I I don't know what I I'd jerk off a lot. I'll tell you. And you'd probably it's be safer. afraid of who do you even trust of. They just, you know, you don't even know what, you know what I'm saying? And as a friend, like, it's like, I, you wouldn't even know what to do, probably. Like, how do you filter through, like, well, so I mean, many you know, people? I mean, uh, you, you just don't know, you don't, you got to be careful about the person you're going out with. I mean, it becomes very paranoid. You know? I would imagine you had to be like, oh, God, you know, like, you'd probably be on edge all the time, like eggshells to do anything now. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, 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 I don't think I would be. It, it, it's for me, for you and I, Tony, it would be totally different from you know if Alex was you know set us back for for thirty years and and, 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 and you know Alex in that situation it'd be totally different. Well, I like the we girl could go like, out with the, just about anybody. Alex would have to watch his ass like well, like you the, know. Well, that, well, the girl like the, the girl like uh, uh, Tony. To do Tony, anything. let me talk here. Uh, uh, what I said last night about this girl who who told her father that I'd gotten her pet pregnant. When yeah. she got pregnant, and it turned out that that I, she didn't. Her father finally phoned me up again to apologize because it turned out that when he when confronted with, well, who got you pregnant? The first thing she thought of was the guy she listened to in the morning. You know, well, I mean, you're subject to that kind of thing, but today, if you're subject to it, you're guilty automatically. I've got to somehow get a lawyer. That, you have to fight your way out of it. That's right. That's At your right. expense. That's right. At your expense. That's right. And, and, you know, I've known a couple of women. I always said to myself, have I ever done anything that would get me in trouble today? And I thought about it, and I said, yeah, probably, because I, I had a couple of women I knew who were batshit nuts, okay, who, to get even with me, would accuse me of something. Mm -hmm. You know, that was always a possibility. Today, I don't think I'd be dating. I think I would go out and look get at, married and look stay Look at all the roadies, way. the roadies and the, and the you know, the... The, yeah. the crazy, you know, women that used to follow all the bands and everything else and Groupies. screw them. Yeah. You know, that stuff happened all the time back then. And now, you think these guys would let that happen all the time? I don't know. I seriously Wonder. doubt it. Anyway, hey, it's, uh, yes, uh, Alan, quickly. I just wanted to bring up something you were talking about with Bobby Slate and the thing where you stuck your foot into the thing and they x-rayed it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They, they stopped using those because they were so shoddily put together that people, not your foot, but just people in general were dying of cancer. Walking by the machine, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, the people in the, the shoe store salesmen right. were dying at 35 years old. They, they were in Tom McCann shoe stores. Anyway, that's it for tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate it. Of course, Tony, always great to have you here. Alan, appreciate it. And Brian, uh, thank uh, you uh, very much tonight. And also that uh, ventriloquist dummy that sits on your lap occasionally that really isn't a cute-looking little girl, but just a great-looking dummy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, she's adorable. You are so lucky. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. 
There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the Citizens Panel. They're out of here. So am I. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, same time. Same station in life. Yeah. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay? And by the way, please, if you haven't done it already, just for yourself and for everybody around you, go get vaccinated. It's only a prick. 